Okay. Hello! We're gonna turn our pumpkins uh, that we grew or that voluntarily grew in our front yard into mush so that we can use it for pumpkin pie and pumpkin bread. And apparently this style of pumpkin is not really good for the pumpkin pie because of, of its size and the, and the uh, uh, texture. So, uh, but that's fine. We can make a lot of pumpkin bread out of these, these pumpkins. I need a few things for this. So I need a good sharp knife to, to cut it up. I need a good spoon to uh, remove the innards and the, the seeds. Uh, I need a couple of uh, large cookie trays and I'll be coating these with uh, foil because as these bake down they release a lot of fluid and uh, that fluid has a tendency to burn to the pan so to prevent from having to uh, clean pans and scrub pans for a lot I'm gonna line those with foil and, and allow that fluid to burn to the foil and then I can discard the foil. I also have my trusty dusty KitchenAid. Uh, trusty dusty? Oh yeah, <laughs> it was pretty dusty. I haven't used it in a while. Uh, and I use that to mash the pulp after it's been baked. And then I take that mashed pulp and throw it in my strainer in the sink um, to allow it to drain a little bit of the fluid off. And then I package it in four cup packages which I then, in freezer bags, specifically, freezer bag. oh yeah, yeah, freezer bags, here we go. Uh, so the quart size freezer bags, which will then go into the freezer, and then I can bring them out four cups at a time to um, make either pumpkin bread or pumpkin uh, something. Mm. I go through and remove the top, just like I would normally do, uh, if you're like cutting for a jack-o'-lantern. And uh, I did, Sharpen my knife nice and sharp. Um, they said most of the uh, materials around the lid is very woody and not to use it. This one's nice and thick. Okay, so we will need to set our oven at 300, at about 25 to 350 degrees, and uh, then line our pan with foil, as I specified earlier. It doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to make sort of a bowl. Simply take a piece of the pumpkin, set it face down like that. Place it in your oven. Takes approximately an hour and a half to two hours to cook a section of pumpkin. Of course, the larger the pumpkin, the more time it's gonna take throughout the day. But uh, in about two hours, we'll take that out, let it cool for a little bit, and put the next piece in. One hour later. And I just increased it because I think it's gonna take a little longer. Right. So uh, it shrunk down a little and you can see the juice is boiling there and there. And, uh, you see it's, yeah, it is steaming a little bit. When we get to the uh, hour and a half mark or so, we'll stick a fork in it like this, and it should go in 
Yeah, it's really resisting. So it's like a kind of like a potato. Like a potato. You don't want any resistance. You want it to make sure that the the flesh is all uh, heated up and and soft. Twenty minutes later. You tucker it out there. Cool. I really don't want you in the middle of the kitchen. All right, so we're gonna check it again. And that was my first mark, so I'm gonna stick that. Oh, slides it nice. Comes out real nice. Yeah. See how much it's really baked down. Yep. Yeah. So. Now we're We'll take about 15, 20 minutes for it to cool down. Okay. So we'll flip it over and that's the flesh. And we'll take our big old spoon and we'll put it into a nice metal bowl. I like to do it a little bit warm. Um, you gotta be real careful because the flesh is really really hot. Um, and so it uh, should be around 155 to 160 degrees. And then that's good. Okay. All right, so we've let it cool a little bit. I'm gonna try to flip it over without splashing. Ooh, still steam coming off of it. Oh yeah. It's hot, but it's doable. So you can, uh, as you peel this apart, leave the burnt parts and just peel the flesh out from underneath it. There's plenty of flesh, so you don't have to worry about losing that little bit. Got a sufficient amount here. Take it on the mixer. Grab my whisk. Got to heat that up for a few seconds. This is pretty much just the stringy parts, so I don't keep those. So I've got a kind of a mash, okay. and I dump it into my strainer. And then, as you can see, a lot of uh, fluid comes off of it. And then we do it all over again. And yeah, keep going. Try to finish it. Try to finish this up. And And there's two more still waiting, so we've got a long day ahead of us. Takes just about all day to do one pumpkin. Okay. Okay, so this is the last batch. And it is 9 o'clock at night. It's time to go to bed, Annie. I'm aware of that. <laughs> First thing I gotta do is I measure it out so that I know I have four cups. So this is a two cup measuring cup. All right, doggy dogs. Bye bye. <laughs> They're just really interested in what's going on. Get back. All right. There's one. Basically, glue. There's two. Is it still warm? Get all the air out. Flatten her out. And we add it to the massive pile, forming. <laughs> Here. Wow. So that's 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, and the last one will be 14 and it'll be a partial. Four cups per bag, and 14 bags is uh... Anybody want any pumpkin? <laughs> that was two pumpkins that we got from our front yard. Two pumpkins we did not plant, and, and there's a third one growing. But that one's gonna be... That one's gonna be a jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, because it's, 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 yeah, it's like the 4th of October, if we... We harvest it in a week, couple weeks probably. I think I'm gonna harvest it so I can get it to uh, ripen up because it's still pretty green. Yeah. And then I'll invite my daughter over. She's a pretty good artist when it comes to carving pumpkins. So. Yeah. All right. So that's how. So that's going in our freezer. And uh, if you work with us, so you notice you're probably gonna get some pumpkin bread for Christmas. Absolutely. Because <laughs> so. we're not gonna use all this ourselves. Yeah. But we will make it into bread hopefully. Okay. So thanks for watching. Bye. Adios. Let's go to bed. I hear That's you. That's a lot of pumpkin. Bye.